If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zin. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. Boom! Bam! This is the Miraculous Gospel of Healing Podcast with Zin Pear and Tony Myers. And we are back at you again. And today, what we are actually going to be covering is some more healing testimonies or miraculous testimonies. Let's last... hear what you got, holy brothers. <laughs> <laughs> in, the last, in the last episode, we actually heard four of some dynamic testimonies from, 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 uh, from Tony. And today, I'll be pouring it out. <laughs> All right. So the first, the first testimony in particular that I, I want to share today is one of the very first testimonies that I experienced in 2015. And this was actually before we even knew what we know now. I had just actually encountered Corey Blake's DHT and um, was putting it into practice after going through it about six times at, 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 at my initial hearing of it. And I actually had some healings around me. But when I'm speaking about that, I want to actually go to one in particular where I, around that time, we, the scrutiny of the scriptures was actually taking place with all of the experiments. And I was looking for a prophet. I decided, you know, Maybe I could speed up this process if I, if I find a prophet who is already functioning and talk to them and hear what they're saying and what they're experiencing so that we could take that and relate it to the scriptures and, 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 and cover some ground faster. So an opportunity came for me to leave Trinidad and go to another Caribbean island called Grenada. Mm. Right? Because there was a friend of the family there who is actually connected to a, a ministry in the United States. And in that ministry, in that ministry, they actually do, um, she identifies as a prophet or a prophetess. So I say, you know something? Let me go speak to this person. So I grabbed the opportunity and I went, I, I went to, with, with this family member and we went across the Grenada. So while I'm in Grenada, you know, I'm still doing my research where, where, um, where, I, um, where I can. I'm listening to Curry Blake while I'm across there also listening to the thing that he's saying while I'm carrying on the research. And it so happens that the same friend of the family, who is the prophetess, she actually was about to ordain two pastors for a branch that they were actually opening in Grenada. Right? Two young people. And so we were invited to this wedding. And we went. We went to the wedding. And um, when I arrived, I saw some people there and I sat down amongst the majority of the people and I realized they were speaking about, you know, having a, a Sunday school, a Sunday, a Sunday meeting for the adults and Sunday school for the children and all of these things. And then amongst all of that, a Canadian, young Canadian guy walks up to me and he introduces himself. He says that he is actually a missionary, a missionary that just came from Nepal. So I asked him, you know, where are you from? He said, well, I'm actually a Canadian. And I went on this missionary trip to Nepal. And he said, I don't know. He, then he begins, no, he just met me, right? But he just begins to tell me what was taking place to me. He says, I, I don't know if I drank something in, way before I left Nepal. He said, because the water in Nepal is not very clean. And um, I don't know if I drank something, but it's actually upset my stomach and I've been vomiting ever since. So he says, I came here on the flight and I was vomiting consistently on the flight. My stomach had no rest. And last night, I actually was vomiting also. And I just had arrived here yesterday, early yesterday. I was vomiting last night and I got up this morning. And I think I'm, and I also vomited this morning. So I'm listening to him and say, wow, there's a lot of vomiting going on here. <laughs> right? 
So <clears throat> while she's speaking to me, I said, would you like me to pray for you? Now, I am just listening to Corey Blake, right? And before Corey Blake at a Pentecostal, it already gone off to pray for people just like that. Even though my parents, they are people who function like ministers and they would go and pray for people. But listen to Curry Blake, you know, you see talking about stepping out and things like that. You know, so exercise my little courage and say, hey, you would like me to pray for you. I don't know what was going to happen. Would you like to pray for me? <laughs> <laughs> so he says, he watches me, he says, okay. So all I did was take my palm, put it on his, on, on his stomach, and all I said was stomach, settle. And it was about, let's say about, I, I left my hand there for about, let's count three seconds. And then I removed my hand and then he just watches up at me like that. He watches me. And he just storm off. <laughs> right? So he storms off. <clears throat> and I am thinking, I wonder if I said something to him. I don't know what, why, why he did that. So I'm sitting there because I don't know what's going to happen. I just realize this guy storm off. I don't know what's going to happen from here. But I am here by invitation, right? <laughs> a few minutes after, not more than five minutes, he returns with a with a, a more mature gentleman with glasses on, and he's apparently a pastor on the ministry, under the ministry. So he just walks up, and the young, the Canadian guy, he watches me and he says, this is the man. So I say, oh boy. <laughs> Where's the tar and feathers? <laughs> he said, there's a the guy right there. So this, the elderly gentleman, now we get to speak to me, he says, you prayed for him just now? I said, yeah. He said, well, he just came to me and he said that he's healed. He has, he's not feeling sick anymore. His stomach was just settled. It's just settled. He said, would you pray for me? I said, sure. What do you want me to pray for? So, you know, he, he points to his foot. And I'm seeing that he's wearing a shoe within a shoe. And he tells me, I, I've done 12 surgeries on this already. 12 surgeries. And they have not been able to rectify the problem. It's still not functioning in the way it should. I'm not, I have no feeling in this leg. And um, I've been walking like this for the last, I think it was... 10 to 15 years he's been walking like this so he's he's had his surgeries from time to time over this period of time so i said okay so he says let's go inside so we walk into we, we walk around the building we walk into this little room and in this little room is just some sofas and a little chair in the center not not even bright it smells musty but there's a little glass table in the center and I said, okay, well, let's pray. So I told him, lift your leg and put it up on the table. So he lifts his leg, he put it up on the table, and I lay hands on it. I lay hands once. I remove it. I said, check it and see. He gets up. He said, no. So sit down again. I lay hands on it. Second time. Three seconds, three to four seconds. Get up and check it and see. I ain't sure. All right, sit down again. <laughs> right. lay, lay hands the third time. He said, I'm feeling something now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a sensation. I said, sit down again. So by the fourth time, I lay hands, and he begins to feel burning going down the leg. He said, I'm feeling burning in the entire leg. It's burning, going straight on the leg. He said, that's definitely progress because I had no feeling in this leg. So if I'm feeling, I'm burning, it's it's something happening. right? So I say, okay, so now again, lay hands again. By the fifth time, the leader of the area, of the, of the meeting, she walks inside because somebody went and tell her that somebody got healed. And then she comes to see well, who got healed. <laughs> so she comes around, finds us in this room, and says, what's going on here? And I say, well, I've just been praying for him here. I've actually um, 
being laying hands on him here and he's actually um being seen improvement so she watches him but at the time she watches him she watches him in a kind of way that i assume that there's some sort of internal communication taking place and so i walk out and as soon as i walk out somebody wheels a woman in a wheelchair to me she said that she had no feeling and they on the left of her leg and they asked me to pray for her so i just lay hands on her the same way and say body you will not function correctly now i haven't been able to follow up on her so, but we left from there um and we went home and apparently i realized i was told that actually that what i did there was actually against the church policy i wasn't supposed to lay hands or nobody from the church is supposed to accept being being um having having hands laid on them unless the leadership permits it right so the next day i get dropped home that was communicated to me they tell me you know that you're yeah. a bad boy yeah that you're immature and that you when you grow when you grow more and you become more responsible you know experiencing these things now don't mind they're not experiencing that but they're telling me i will grow more and i would actually don't do those things and things like that so i listen here and it comes right <laughs> <laughs> so we left there and on the way home we 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 heading home and then the the the, the 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 friend of the family decides to stop in by her mom so we pull up left the guy who had lay hands on there and, and the lady in the wheelchair we pull up by her home and um i walk inside the house and she begins to say that her mother is at this age and she's experiencing this and she's experiencing that and she fell recently and all of that so i walk into this room and i see this old elderly lady lying um sitting down on the bed and she can't see she's not walking really and the arm is broken because she fell so I walk in there, and whilst I walk into the room, some conversation took place. Then the family member and the friend of the family exits the room. So it's just myself and my youngest sister sitting down in this room. So I position myself next to the elderly lady by the bed. I say, well, I get more practice here now. <laughs> so I sit down by the elderly lady and I say, so I'm, I'm, I address her moms. That's a term of respect here in the Caribbean. So say, moms, what happened? What happened to your arm? Now, whilst I'm actually asking that, I'm very affectionately touching her arm. And she said, son, I fell down and, it, and the arm broke. It fractured the arm. So I can't lift it. And they just took it out of the cast. But it's still broken. It, it, I can't lift it more than this and she's showing me like literally she's just nudging it eh? so i said so well, tell me the story how how that happened so while she's telling me the story i'm holding one hand my, my left hand holding her hand and my right hand is at the back of her elbow and all i'm doing is actually i'm just laying hands on it while she's speaking and i'm while she's speaking i carry i'm following the story and i'm very gently rocking the arm right and she said she's giving me the story where she was walking and she fell and this and and and, and, and she got up and the other hospital and while she's saying that and i swayed about six to seven times right now mind you whilst i'm doing this in my mind i'm thinking this might not work <laughs> Right? That's the thought that comes up in your mind, right? And I decided to take in that thought and I'm putting it outside of my, of my, whatever in my mind I am, I'm putting it outside. And I'm flowing that right there. And while she's speaking, I simply raise the arm straight over her head. And she starts to shout, Oh my God, young man, you, you are, you are God. <laughs> At the top of her voice 
And then she lowers her hand. She starts to do so. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm not feeling any pain. Oh, my God. And she must be said that about six or seven times. By that time, everybody on the residence is alerted that something is going on in the room. So everybody runs into the room. Right? Her arm is just healed. And she says, somebody, um, the, the friend of the family came in and she said, what happened? She said, he, he healed my arm. No pain. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? so then, then she says, she says, son, pray for my eyes. I want to see. <laughs> so I lay hands on her eyes about three times. I lay hands on her eyes three times. But the second time, she said, everything bright. And I've seen everything clearly, but it just get very bright. And I lay hands on her again. And she said, pray for my legs. So she, <laughs> so she put her legs on top of the, um, the, the bed. And I laid hands on her, on, on her legs. And she said, I said, move them now. She said, don't move them. She said, they're feeling warm. I'm feeling heat in my legs. I said, that's normal. That's very normal. You just move it around. Now, just around that time, the friend of the family said, look, we need to leave. We need to leave now. So I actually just gave her a hug and I said, Mom, you'll be all right. Everything will be okay. You are healed. And I left. We left. We went back home. And the next day, now notice in these incidents, I only literally saw one complete. The others, I left and went right? Trusting that the spirit is doing what he does. And the next day, the person, the friend of the family came across and she said, I went to that man that you laid hands on yesterday at the church. And um, he, I knocked on his door because she went, she, she literally went to visit him because she wanted to find out from him why did you allow somebody who is not from the church to lay hands on you? And she said, I, I, I arrived and he had his shoe on top of the table and he was walking around in the apartment normal. He is healed. And she asked him why and he said, all I wanted to do was to be healed. And then she told me, her mom, the mom was actually walking the next day she went, the morning, um, the day she went, the mom was, I get up and walking around. Her vision was coming back. She said it's not clear as yet, but she's coming back. So she was actually seeing her hand as well. And she is up and moving around. Yeah, so that's three testimonies in one right there, one shot. <laughs> The last testimony in particular um, that, well, I'll give it, uh, let me see if, if I can squeeze into here quick. <laughs> All right. Um, the next testimony is actually concerning one of my girlfriend's sons. All right. He actually, one day he actually began to have seizures. Now, he, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy when he was born and when I met him in this was actually I met him in 2016 when I was still fresh with this when I met him Tony he was literally just laying there right the first time I laid hands on him he began to start he, he began to move around the second time I laid hands on him he began to crawl like literally begin to crawl off of this is moving from just uh, just like just laying there he began to crawl and today he's actually improved a lot he still has some deformities that we are actually going to be sorting out but from where he was to where he is now he he is able to communicate and he is thinking normal he, can, he carries on communication his speech is still not very clear and we need to get him to, to start to walk now, right? Because he's in a wheelchair. But from where he was to where he is now, it's totally different. In 2007, I think it was 2018, around February, she, he actually began to suffer seizures. The seizure that he 
found himself in lasted for about 50 minutes. Now, medically, if your brain, they say if your brain returns out oxygen for more than six minutes, your brain cells begin to die. Right. 15 minutes he was in a seizure, and they expect them to be a vegetable. My girlfriend uh, called me on the phone and said that she's in the hospital with him and he was in a seizure and it's not looking good. She's crying. So I got up, got off my bed, went to, you know, went to, speak, my, went to speak to my mom and I said, Mom, I'm going to the hospital. So I'm so in the hospital. She said, Oh, gosh, what happened? I explained to her. Now, my mom watched me taking my time and dressing. Walking out of the house, had something to eat. And she said, I'm going to the hospital. I said, Yeah. She said, Why leave yet? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so then I take my time and I walk out of the hospital. Take, so where I, where I was living, I could actually come out of the neighborhood and just cross two main streets and you're on the hospital compound. Right? So I reached there in about 20, 25, about 30 minutes. I arrived there. Girlfriend crying, the, the family gathered there looking all doom and gloom. And I walk and I said, Kelly, come a minute for me, please. I'm going to talk to you. I pull her aside, tears in her eyes. And I, and I truly said this I said, if you want your son to live, you need to stop doing this now. If you really want him to live, wipe those tears from your eyes and we approach this spiritually. If you continue doing what you're doing there, and if your son is dependent on 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 on, on spiritual function, so if you continue doing what you're doing there, he will die. She she just had a wipe tears from her eyes. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to come across insensitive, but it really needed to actually pull pull you out of that zone where in this unbelief and step into the zone that you should be in. And I, at that time, was st was actually now unpacking the garden. And I knew enough at that time that the Garden of Eden was about reference points. I didn't have the details that I have now, but I figured out enough that it was about reference points. And so I told her, the reference points had to be the spirit, not what you're seeing here. So I pull her aside and I had three images on my phone with images with verses on it concerning trust in God that I was actually using to reprogram my, my trust from external things to internal things. Five times a day, the alarm would go off. I would stop and read one, one image and, and apply the verses to me, practicing trust in God from here. Right? That has its own testimony, by the way. Because when it really switched, I remember a whole month of experiments, Tony, when it finally switched. And I, I got up the Saturday morning after right. seven days. When it finally switched and I got up, I feel like it switched. <laughs> a month of, of experiments that would not work in for a month started to happen one after the next. Like somebody opened a drawer and the files just started to jump out. And that is when I realized self-existence is necessary for power, all right? That, that's a separate, a, a separate testimony in itself. So I pull her in the hospital and I said, hey, what's going on? We need to talk. We need to actually stop this crime and trust and actually take it from the spiritual perspective and trust the spirit here. Tony, we sit down and I actually pull it up. And every, every 30 minutes, I pull, up, pull it up on the phone and say, let's go through the next one and practice trusting God here for him. Every 30 minutes. And we were there for about four hours. So every 30 minutes. So in a four hours, we did that about eight times just to keep her mind from straying over the place. We just, she just got, just, just got her call. Now imagine he actually had been diagnosed with cerebral palsy. He just came out 15 minutes of seizure, which means he's double the amount of time that he should have brain damage. Right. I walk into the room and the doctor says, Moms, I have no explanation for what's going on here. But your son is fully coherent. 
when Kelly heard him speak, he was speaking more than before the seizures. Hmm. His voice got clearer. He was speaking and he was fully functional. Right? Still, not, still wasn't able to walk, but fully brain, brain, his coherence and his ability to, to listen and understand was fully there. And the moms and the doctor literally told her, Mom, I do not, I cannot explain this. But usually a child that spends that amount of time in a seizure um, should not be like this. Right. But I have no idea, and this, but this is what it is. And they stood up there and just, they asked to keep him overnight just to observe him. And the next morning I came, which is the last testimony here, the next morning I came whilst they were observing him. And I came with my phone, I'm a Bible on my phone and things like that. And I sat down there and I said, look, let me try. this is an opportunity for another experiment. So this is all I did. Pull up Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 on the phone. This is another experiment that was going on here. It says that for those who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. So I decide, I'm going to test this, I'm going to test this scripture verse. And I sat down there just acknowledging that Yeshua in me is shining like the son of righteousness in the entire world. I started that at 10 o'clock in the morning. And just to keep my mind from, from going over the place, I just sat down and I was reading the book of Colossians. Right? I go into the book of Colossians whilst I am acknowledging that I'm shining. By 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the whole world was dismissed to me. Everybody recovered and went home. Everybody just had to get dismissed. I'm talking you about bankrupted him. that house. <laughs> <laughs> the whole ward, the whole children's ward went home. Right? I love it. I literally stood up and heard the nurses saying, well, this is strange. We never had this before. They began to take off the lights, Tony, from the different rooms. Right, right. <laughs> and they're just there going through their motions and doing what they're doing. And Kelly and her son were the only two and her son and another child was there. And I left there. And Kelly called me and said, um, she heard that the child had a, 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 a growth somewhere on some organ. Right? And they were keeping him there because it was, they didn't know it, if it would be detrimental. This is when I left. They would, she and her son and this boy was the only two people in this one room. The rest of the ward <laughs> lights out. <laughs> right? And she calls me and she tell me that on the phone. I said, put the phone on loudspeaker, but lower the, vo lower the volume. So I put the phone on loudspeaker and I started to speak to his body. And I said, tumor, leave. Body, you are now function and there shall be no more growths in that body. So the next morning, doctor comes. Assesses him and says, and say, moms, your son good to go, you know? Everything looking all right? Everything went. He was dismissed the next morning. Bam. <laughs> you know, son? And then her son was actually dismissed. So since then, we've actually been praying on him time to time and we've seen great results from being motionless. We've seen that actually progressive. The, the, the some people may ask, so why didn't it take place um, immediately? And to that in particular, we could I can only deduct reasons, but I can't really say outrightly that this is actually why it's taking place progressively, because not all of the healings that I have seen are always totally instantaneous. Some of them are actually progressive. It takes place sometimes over an hour, over a day. Sometimes 36 hours, and then the person fully recovers. But it is notable, notable though, that when it when we gave the instruction, that's when things start to change. That's when it starts to go around. Over time, I've actually come to realize that when you want to make things miraculous or immediate, it's, it is a lot better to actually get them involved, to move around the life force in the body. And sometimes you could release it and it takes its time and it works. 
progressively. But once you get them to start to move, then it speeds up the process. So there, I will awesome. some testimonies. Awesome. <laughs> I love those testimonies. Completely awesome. Uh, you're the one. I had a thought. What's that? Sounded almost like one I had experienced, but now I completely forget. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come back to my one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, those were awesome testimonies. I love the flat pack that that one wing, you got them all. That's awesome. Oh, uh -huh. right, right, right. So, <laughs> it, actually, it actually proved to me that you don't need to lay hands on everybody. Exactly right. Um, you don't need to. Which is something that I seldom ever laid hands on people. Right. And then um through mean with my pastor bill right he kind of got me to laying hands again just because people need the touch right not for the healing no it's but true. for their heart because especially and for me it was during the virus years right right and our church was the only church that was open people were isolated everything else that is when i really saw people needed the physical contact for their feet for for that for themselves yes yeah and so you know now you know sometimes i do sometimes i don't but just for that human contact, right. I did start to do it again. Right. Um, which is why I love Pastor Bill, because things like that, I see, okay. All right. So I don't need to touch them, but they may need it. Right, right, right. So, that makes sense. Um, awesome. All right. The next episode. The next episode, uh -huh. what are we going to talk about? The next episode we are actually going to be speaking about is what, defining what divine healing is. So we're going to start doing some teachings, eh, brother? We're going to start doing some teachings. We, are, we, both, have, ex we both have experience with healing, and I think it would be very, very useful for our listeners to actually understand how we see it. And that so. will be after the new year. After the new year, we start not the new year with a boom and a bam and a bam. <laughs> <laughs> that is our new signature, by the way. Boom and bam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Tony, you want to speak live over the or, or, or listeners before you wrap it up? Right now, I speak life over every single person that hears. Not only with their physical ears, but with their spirit. So this will reach more than people just listening to this podcast. I just speak life over whatever part of your body. There's something off. The brain, the torso, the chest, the appendages and all the in, in, internal organs right now you are healed thank you jesus now get up and function normally and it has been done get up literally get up <laughs> yes get up all right so this is the america the miraculous gospel of Eden podcast we are your hosts, Zane, Pierre, and Tony Myers. See you in the next episode. Boom. Bam. <laughs>